welcome back to another episode of The Social Sellers. And today we are going to talk about Sandy Viteri, the video podcast guru who is going to teach you, he's going to tell you, and you learn how to monetize your podcast and how you can elevate your social media presence with video. So I am going to wait until she comes to our live and there she is. Hello, how are you? And welcome. I just make you a, a small introduction, but I am super excited to be here with you. Hello. <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good, good. Thank you for having me here on your space. Thanks. Let me just add a little bit of volume here because I feel that I, I can hear you properly. Okay, perfect. So how are you doing? How has been the last week for you? <laughs> it's been great. It's been really, really busy. Because we're in the middle of our sessions uh, from Video Podcast Academy. So we're in classes and I'm teaching English and Spanish. So it's pretty good. It's exciting. So for those who are going to join or are going to watch the replay, I am Ilya Francis. I am a social media and social selling trainer, LinkedIn expert, and I help entrepreneurs to elevate your social media life, especially on LinkedIn with the social selling strategies. And I'm bringing every week new entrepreneurs, people who are making a true impact just for you to learn the art of social selling with different strategies. So right here, I have my dear friend, fellow Venezuelan, <laughs> Sandy Terry. You are a marketing expert, a marketing queen. You've, you've worked before for a $300 million company and you led the marketing uh, side of that business. Can you tell us a little bit about your story? Hi, Anya. It's so nice to see you back in our life. Yeah. Hi, Anya. How are you doing? Uh, yeah. So back in the day, if you really want to go back that much, um, I really actually started my life and working life actually we, uh, in a restaurant um, as a waiter. And then after that, I went and I worked in a department store. I didn't speak the language at all. I didn't speak any English. I was just recent coming from Venezuela. And at that point in time, I said, if I really want to learn the language, I need to submerge myself into the environment and the culture and, and keep moving. So I literally took the newspaper and I found a few job posts. I didn't even have a resume at the time. LinkedIn didn't exist at the time. So wow. <laughs> I, two years ago. Two years. Let's just let's years. It last year, last year. <laughs> So I went and I put together my resume. I submitted to a few places and I got hired as a part-time receptionist for this company. And I took that as my very first step to learn the corporate world and learn how to actually go up on the uh, corporate ladder. And at that point in time, I also signed up for a school and I went to George Mason to study marketing and I had a son that I had just given birth. Um, so all those things were happening at the same time for me. And I was only 20 years old. Um, then soon thereafter, my mother got diagnosed with cancer. We went through that. And it was just like the determination in me that said, you know, I really need to get through this. I need to find what I'm really passionate about. So as I was going through school, studying marketing, I got promoted from receptionist to an executive assistant to the CEO of the company. And then wow. I said, I'm ready. I want to do real marketing. So for that company, we, I ended up becoming the VP of marketing. And we took the company public. We went to NASDAQ, rang the bell. So it's, it's been wow. a journey. It's been definitely a journey. So I worked after that for a few um, different companies, global companies responsible for uh, their global marketing efforts. And two years ago, I got laid off. And I said, that's it. <laughs> I'm going to go do my own thing. And that is how I went and I decided to start my own business as an entrepreneur. 
That's fantastic. And ever since, you know, two years ago, you decided, okay, marketing obviously is my jam. And uh, when do you decide to go from the video side of marketing? Yeah. So <laughs> it, this is funny because I actually always loved cameras, but cameras for photos, not necessarily video cameras. Some way, somehow, I never actually realized that I was super nervous to be in front of the camera. So to me, um, at the time when I got laid off, I said, okay, I am going to create my own business. I'm going to take the expertise that I had from the corporate world that is all beautiful, shiny, polished, and share that with entrepreneurs that are just starting their business so they can actually do it at a very affordable price. But um, I did get a few clients and we created their brand and their websites and their content. But I was like, something is missing still. So that is when I embarked into launching my own podcast. And initially, it was just the audio piece. But knowing what I knew with the marketing experience that I had about multi-touches and how many touches requires for a person to convert into a paying client, I became obsessed with, with like the data and finding out like, how do you really launch a podcast, which is the audio, and why not? And instead of asking myself, you know, why should I add that? I was like, why not? To me, it was more like, yes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to find out how to do it, and I don't care what anybody tells me. So I started sharing that idea with other entrepreneurs, and they're like, it takes too much time. It takes too much work. No, don't do it. I'm like, I'm not going to listen. <laughs> so that exactly. is what yeah, that is when I decided, okay, I'm going to do research. I find out how many uh, listeners were there. Hi, Selma, for um, the everyone. audio piece, the podcast, and then how um, viewability for video was increasing tremendously. And that is when I found this stat that actually made me make that final decision that I realized you know, by 2022, 80% um, of the traffic driven to the internet is going to come from people looking for videos. At that wow. point in time, I said, you know, whomever has a podcast, they need to add video and whomever doesn't have one, they need to do it as a video podcast so they can capitalize on what's coming. It's not only that it's here already, but it's even going to increase even more. So yeah. Exactly, and I've seen you. I've seen you that you you were um, your interview on your podcast. Dozens and dozens of people, experts, subject matter experts in different areas. Um, and what do do they also use video, or they are mainly in, in you know in a variety stage of their uh, their platform or visibility? Because um, one thing is to jump in. Uh, being interviewed, but then in the practice, who is getting into, you know, the need and greed? I am very shy with video. And here, this is the best uh, proof that I'm stepping out of my comfort zone, that I am producing more videos, that I'm, you know, learning the techniques to, to be confident and look confident on camera because I criticize myself, and I know that many people do that. So <laughs> yeah. tell us, tell us all the, the all the secrets. What yeah. you should advise to yeah. all of those. But first of all, let's talk about your guests. Yes. So to answer first that question, um, some of the guests that I have, some of them do have podcasts, and some of them don't. So for the ones that don't have podcasts, either, either one, for both, I always let them know that this is going to be recorded as a video podcast, that there is going to be a video portion and an audio portion. And I give them some guidelines. I have the templates and I give, um, I teach my students all of that within Video Podcast Academy. So I let my guests know so they are prep, they're prep, they're prime to actually be ready to show up on camera. Now, for those that feel a little bit timid, that are not used to it, I actually give them pointers. So, you know, some of the things that I say is, you know, focus number one and number one most important so it can turn into something actionable for the people listening is focus on your message. Focus on your audience. <laughs> 
Why? Because this actually happened to me, right? At first, whenever I went and I, I was in front of a camera, I'll be like, oh, I'm looking at myself. My hair doesn't look good. Oh, my God. And it's like, what about if I start saying, ah, mm, mm, ah. So those things happen when you're focused on you. You yes. immediately have to remove that focus from you to the person that you're delivering, the people that you're delivering the message. And automatically, you're going to feel that transition within your brain and all of a sudden, you, it's not like you don't matter anymore, but you become less important. So that's number one. Tip number two that is super actionable, I tell them. So if you're just getting used to being on camera and like IGTV or interviews for video podcasts, my recommendation is that you actually practice. And how do you practice? Well, you okay. can very easily record yourself. And then for the people that feel like, oh, where do I look? I say, look straight at the camera, otherwise, if you're looking someplace else, your viewer is not going to feel like you're connecting with them. So you exactly. need to look straight at the camera. If you're still having difficulty and you feel like, well, but I get really nervous, I say, okay, take a picture of your best friend and put it right behind and then talk like you're talking to your wow. best friend. <laughs> <laughs> so people that ended up doing that, they're like, oh my God, that was the magic trick. Because, oh, wow. because now I feel like I'm talking, I mean, it, it really means like you want to address your audience like you're talking to the audience of one. You're talking to all of them, but you're talking to each of them individually. And how did you do that? Like you're talking to your best friend, right? So, so that's another that tip. Awesome. <laughs> For me, I think that um, I, I'm either going to turn the camera away so that I can yeah. see just the lens instead of my reflection. And that is the key. That is the, that's the key that I have always been uh, conscious about. Seeing myself, oh my God, the hair is not right in place. <laughs> yeah. I am twitching my face. What's going on? I forgot what I had to say. So yeah. my message gets lost. And of course, the stuttering, the filler words come yeah. and you're lost, you're nervous, of course, and you lose the control. So fantastic tip. Now I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to print. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm actually, going to print your face. Yeah, I have, I'm a going few, to your face. I have a few others too. Like, um, I mean, the reason, all about it. The, the reason why we tend to criticize ourselves is because we're, again, paying attention just to ourselves, to how we look, yes. how we're we saying. But the truth is, we're never going to get better if we don't start. So there is your yes. other tip. It's like, just get started. Do it messy. It's okay. We're human. And if I say, uh, mm, every once in a while, with practice, repeating my message, it will get better. So a really good way to practice and get better for those people that really want to see themselves and want to see how their video looks, basically what I recommend is create a separate IG account, like one that is private that nobody have access Take the time to record yourself, right? And then post it to that private IG account that no one has access to. So you can actually see it on the platform and then you can actually learn from it. Why? If you look at how coaches, <laughs> how coaches actually train um, <laughs> football players, right? Yes. They go out on the field, they play, they play really hard, they put their heart and soul in it. And then when they come back, what does a coach do? They make them watch the game. They say, exactly. look at the game. What did we do right? What did we do wrong? Exactly the same thing we need to do. We need to record ourselves, post it to a private IG account that no one else have access to. Maybe you can give access to your best friend that they will give you honest um, feedback. And then you can see yourself and say, okay, well, at this time I didn't actually look at the camera. I looked away a lot. Or... Maybe I said too many ah, so, mm, so maybe I use my hands. I use my hands a lot. <laughs> so little by little, you start perfectioning what you're doing. That's fantastic. Unbelievable. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are going to save it. Uh, IELTS uh, with MG. I know, I know I've seen you on my feed. And please tell us your name because we're going to save this on my IGTV. On my feed, it's going to be live as soon as I finish with uh, Sandy <laughs> because 
I, you know, it's, it's already uh, quarter 20 after 12 and she's already giving us probably a thousand, two, two thousand dollars <laughs> worth of advice. So stay tuned and stay here because she is the queen of podcasting, of video podcasting. Video yes, podcasting. I had never heard about, you know, using the, the private account. I have a private account and that I truly don't use it. I had another uh, string of my business that I want to explore. That's a perfect place for me to practice. Yeah. Because yeah. I always feel conscious. I always look at myself. But now I'm going to print your face because it's beautiful. <laughs> I know it's, it's, it's approachable. It's amicable. And I know that talking to you instead of, you know, seeing myself will help me greatly. So what about now that we are in the in the era of smartphones? How do you what are your tools? What are the best uh, go to the uh, video editing tools uh, that you have on your phone or on your desktop? It doesn't have to be on your phone, but we're always on the go. Yeah. I, for example, I am always recording uh, video stories and I feel always conscious about grabbing a professional camera and sitting in front of it and, and talk, you know, create my videos. Mm -hmm. So I use the phone. What are your best tools? Yes. Uh, so first of all, I use iMovie. That is my go to. It's so simple. I mean, and I talk about iMovie for most of the videos that are not super professional. The ones that I do for uh, my video podcast, I actually send to an editor. I don't edit them myself. I outsource that and they do it on Premiere Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, but other than that, I use iMovie and that is how I edit my videos. So, and then now I'm starting to use Clipomatic which is one that actually shows down below as you're recording, it actually listens to your voice. And as it's listening to your voice, it creates the transcript and the subtitles. So that no. way it's showing immediately as you're talking, yes. So that one wow. is one that I just started using and I'm gonna use more and more specifically for my stories when I'm recording with my phone. Because there is a large percentage of the population, I can't remember what number that is, 60 or 70 percent, that when they watch video on their phones, they actually watch it without volume. So we need to, <laughs> and these are people that are at work, they're at the bathroom, who knows where they are, but the baby's exactly. going to sleep, they're <laughs> breastfeeding, whatever it is that you're doing. If you need to turn that volume down, you need to know that a lot of people are actually consuming video, not listening. So the more that we put the subtitles, the better. Exactly. So uh, what about, you know, your best tool for video caption? If you have, okay, you don't edit your videos, yes. but if you have to do it on the go on your stories or you, ha you want to give it a, a more professional look or the Gary V format, what yeah. are your best tools for I either caption? And I don't know if you, you use Android, if you know any apps for Android. I use Android. You use, obviously, iPhone. iPhone. Um, but yeah. Let me know. I, I use iMovie. That, that's my go-to just because it's so easy to use. I feel like I'm, I'm used to it by now. So that's, that's exactly what I use. Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. Excellent. So um, tell me more about the Academy. Yes. Because I met you last fall. Um, or, you know, last summer, actually, um, after you interview Amanda Kohal for From the Wolf, um, that's you. And, and I got, you know, really enticed to meet and to get to know you more. <laughs> and obviously, ups and downs, nothing happened. And we were invited to do a podcast. We didn't, we had never actually happened. But here we are. Yeah. Uh, you went from, you know, the... Entrepreneurial vibrations. How, how many how many uh, episodes do you have so far on your? Oh podcast? gosh, like thirty four or so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so from there, uh, what's going on? How did the academy happen? So exactly when I started doing the academy, that is, I mean, the video podcast. That is when people started reaching out to me, and they started asking, like, "Wow, how are you adding video?" How are you putting this? How come you are able now to take all this information and put it across all the different social media platforms? Um, so one of my expertise was actually doing 
lead generation through multi-touch campaigns. And that it was exactly what I was doing, like taking that content and using it to have multiple touches across multiple social media platforms. So as more and more people were coming to me and asking me questions, they, how do I do it? What kind of technology do I use? Um, you know, how do you get um, all this across everywhere, the platforms? I just started giving people tips. And as I was giving them the tips, I'm like, why not take all this knowledge that I have? I actually started looking for somebody that teaches video podcasts and there wasn't anyone. And I'm like, this is a great opportunity. There is a lot of people that teach podcasts, which is the audio only. So I started putting the content together for everything. And it was just literally putting down into paper the step-by-step process that I follow myself. So I started putting it together. I said, I'm going to launch this as a digital course. And so I had to actually put my video podcast on hold because I couldn't manage both. That is why we didn't end up doing our interview because I was creating content, (laughs) creating the video podcast, the the academy, um, all the messaging, everything. And when I finally launched it, it was incredible to me that there were that many people actually interested I went, and this was in the beginning of March, where I literally had zero people in my list. I started from zero, from scratch, to worth 3,000 people that signed up for the masterclass. Yes. So in three months, 3,000. Yes. Um, Yes, Anya. The best ideas come from our own pain points. Absolutely. So true. Yeah, yeah. So, so that is how um, I, I launched it. And now that was the first launch. Now I'm going into the second one that is going to be uh, on September 29th. So that, that's coming up. Absolutely. That, and, and you're going to have an, uh, <laughs> a student soon there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. And I actually nope. just saw a message here from Salma, who's one of my current students, uh, she's so sweet. She's like, I'm one of your current students. Her program is amazing. I'm her student. Yeah. Thank you, Salma. Um, so yeah, it's been a ride. And, and obviously, I mean, nothing is perfect, you guys. It's like when you think like you need to have everything finished, polished, perfect. No. I, I used to be a perfectionist big time. And my mentality going through all these experiences has been that you're better off taking small steps in messy mistakes and in in do it than not doing it at all because that is where you learn that is where you grow when you push yourself outside of the boundaries of the comfort when you go into these above and beyond that is when you start learning and knowing that you can do better every single time Absolutely. Wow. What, what, what a fantastic, well, this, I, I ha, I'm going to break down this IGTV in different parts because <laughs> I know people will get so much out of, you know, every single, uh, you know, piece of advice that you've given us. And it's, and it's all about sometimes the, the F ups, you know, when, you know, the mistakes and the failures. Yeah. So have you had anything that you've considered a, a failure and what did you learn from from that experience? Because people talk about all the successes, all you know, uh, the money, the income they they've generated. But I want to you know bring a human part, you know, the the not so pretty side yeah. of being a social <laughs> seller because you will reach so much people. Yeah. Man, you need also we need to be humans. We need to let them know, hey. We also make mistakes. Yes. And I have plenty of those. Believe me, it's not like I am mistake free. Not at all. And actually, I'll give you some which actually ended up being kind of funny now that I look back. But my very first interview, my hands were sweating, sweating so much. And I don't I've never experienced that in my life before. But I was in front of this person who is world renowned on lighting for um this uh for for the big games the football games and all that so i was interviewing him i was super nervous my hands were sweating then i had a piece of 
papers where I had all the questions and I could see like the paper like getting like soggy and I'm like oh <laughs> so I had to put it on the side and I'm like okay so next time I either control my nervousness or I don't hold a paper in my hands. So those are the type of things <laughs> that nobody will tell you, but unless that you start experiencing it, then you know, well, how I look back and how do I deal or handle this situation? Another one, so ladies, you know, I was, I had a button down shirt and one button was open. It was, it's the truth, it's the reality. I never ended up publishing that video podcast because no. it, it wasn't like it was completely open and you can see, it, you know, much, but it bothered me. It bothered me that in somehow, in some direction, one of the cameras could see it. So, you know, yeah, yeah you learn, you take the time to not use button down shirts <laughs> as a rule. But yeah, those are mistakes and things that happen. And it was an amazing interview. That was an awesome interview that I never ended up publishing. <laughs> so well, there you have it. Maybe the audio, maybe the audio would have, you know, would have been fantastic. But yeah, yeah. But I was doing video podcasts, so I really wanted to publish the video part. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So yeah, it it, it never, you know, you feel embarrassed, yeah. but in the end, that makes you. Uh, go back and, and say, how can I do the, make the situation better? How can I uh, improve yeah. every time? Even if you do it right, how can we, you know, yeah. take one step further and get better at whatever you're doing? It, it doesn't have to be, you know, the podcast. It, it applies to every single aspect of your entrepreneurial life. So yeah. I, I have a real, you know, a, a question that is being bugging me all the time. I used to have a podcast, uh, it's on hold, but the monetization part of podcasting, okay. how do you attract, how do you entice um, companies, organizations to monetize, you know, obviously to bring and invest on in your podcast? Yeah. Have you had in the past? And no. if you do, Okay. No, not okay. myself, not myself, but there is different ways on how you can monetize your video podcast. The very first thing that I tell people is, first of all, if you're doing this only to be the number one source of income, this is not the right thing for that. If you're doing this to become famous overnight, this is not the right thing for you. The reason why you would do a video podcast is so it complements your overall marketing strategy, right? So video right. podcasting helps you share your message, share your voice, and actually become a thought leader because you're either doing it on your own where you're not interviewing anyone else. So you're sharing your knowledge, you're sharing your skills, right? Or That's you're right. doing it in an interview style where you have someone else that brings also value to your audience. Regardless, it takes time, it takes effort. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's worth it. So how do you monetize it? You have your video podcast and the number one way that I recommend monetization is if you also thinking about your overall strategy, if you also have, let's say, a digital course, then you take your video podcast and you use that as the base platform to share your knowledge, to become the thought leader. And then at the end, you have a call to action. And that call to action sends people to sign up for the paid program, okay? So it's, it's almost like the same way that you have Instagram. You have Instagram there, you use it as a platform to lead people to, if you think about the customer journey, right? They're going from your Instagram onto your website to where you conduct the transaction. You can also use it not only to actually monetize it immediately, signing up for your program, but also to build your list. If you think about all these social media platforms, they're there, but you don't own them. You, they don't belong to you. You don't own your, your contacts. You don't belong, the followers don't belong to you, right? And the oh, day cool. that any of these platforms go down, you have literally lost all your work and effort in contacts. So the main focus should be on bringing those contacts 
into your website or into a place where you can capture their contact information, first name, last name, email. So ideally, even though if you're not selling at that point in time, because usually you sell your course, you know, maybe twice a year, maybe every quarter, if you're in a period of time where you're not selling, ideally you want to continue that promotion and then you want to send them onto your website to download a PDF, the how-tos, the top 10 frequently asked questions, things like that. So that way you can capture that first name, last name, and email. And when the time comes, you can nurture them and send them the information about your program. So that those two are the number one um, ways on how I teach how people can monetize in the long run. And of course, Great. there's advertising, there's partnerships, eh? but those take time and you know, yeah, yeah, you can do it, but you know, it's not my number one that I recommend. Absolutely. So, well, another gem drop. Now, let's talk about your presence and your um, your impact on LinkedIn. Re remember, I I love LinkedIn. I can talk forever. I can talk asleep about LinkedIn yeah. and the potential, the organic reach and the true impact that an individual, regardless of whether you are a professional or a business owner, can have within the platform. How has been your experience on LinkedIn? Yes, amazing, amazing. And this goes back to my corporate time, right? So I originally started building my LinkedIn when I was in the corporate world. And that is what gave me almost like the professional framework to do the things that at the time I knew were right for LinkedIn. And as a matter of fact, when I had LinkedIn, I had that before I even had Instagram or Facebook. I had right. my professional one built up. So one thing that I've noticed with LinkedIn and that I have been able to leverage over time is that I have already a really good, well-established following within LinkedIn because of my corporate you know, background. But then I noticed that there had been a little bit of a shift within LinkedIn where it wasn't used as formally as it was used before. People are, were becoming a little bit more casual, especially now with COVID, right? Um, now, when I launched my video podcast, my very, and when I became an entrepreneur, I said, I'm not going to shy away from LinkedIn because I am an entrepreneur and I'm not in the corporate world. To the contrary, I need to leverage this community and these, um, the people that are already following me. Following me. So, right. So I took my video podcast and the same content that I was publishing onto YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, I said, I am also going to post it onto LinkedIn. It didn't stop me from doing so. And what I see, the views, the engagement, and even people that I've seen within LinkedIn that I've never had their email, now they're actually going and signing up for my newsletters, my lead magnets, and so on. So it definitely is, I recommend 200% for entrepreneurs not to see LinkedIn as just the platform that is used by the corporate. Not at all. More and more entrepreneurs are in there. More and more of them are sharing not only their content, but video. Video is super important. Totally, totally. And, and how, what is the, probably the perfect, I, I won't say the perfect, but what has been the best performing video? What has been the duration, for example? Because I, I know that long videos tend to, you know, distract people you know they start scrolling yeah. because we have short attention span we're always scrolling we're actually in a bad habit so what is the best you know duration <laughs> to create a yeah. high impact video on LinkedIn yeah I would say that depends on the platform okay because you cannot just pretend that all platforms are the same so depending on the platform if you're using YouTube before long form videos called macro videos used to be, you know, consumed very heavily. Nowadays, we're seeing data that people are liking to consume shorter videos. But still, when it's YouTube, people are willing to watch an 8, 10-minute video, okay? So that that's still within the kind of like long, medium 
kind of uh, formatting. Now, the ones that actually hit the nail, that are viewed not only within Instagram, LinkedIn, and all of them, are the so famous two-minute videos. So the two-minute two minute. Two videos. So those, you can ensure that towards the front you have a hook, and then immediately thereafter you jump onto telling what is it that you need to tell. Go through your tips, go through your list, and things like that. Um, even even within um, IGTV, I see a lot of people that you know get on IGTV and they do it thinking only about the audience that are watching them at that very moment. But it shouldn't be that way. We need to think about the audience that is going to watch it after. Okay, it, they're going to watch the replay. So if you think about that, if they go into the video and the replay and they see us saying, "Oh, am I connected? No, maybe I'm not connected. Oh, am I waiting for my guest?" So all those things we need to remove and just go straight to the point. Hi, how are you doing? Today we're going to be talking about LinkedIn and video and da-da-da. So that way the people that watch the replay, they can go straight to the point because they're not on the live conversation. So exactly. I've seen, I've, I've seen something which is natural from uh, the, the human behavior. You click on, you know, to go live and then you start typing as you are live, yeah. but it's recording as your intro. Yeah. So it is a big lesson learned from another uh, another uh, personal image expert that, that says don't wait until yeah. you have everything ready. Just talk to the point, get the introduction, and then you can, you know, start dancing, playing music, you name it. But give the person an intro. Yeah. <laughs> the one it's the hook. Sure. Yeah, it's literally the hook because if you don't get people who have a Nemo, the fish, attention span, and that's literally like a few seconds. Yes. So if you don't get your audience to what they want, what they're looking for from the beginning, then you're going to lose them. So here I'll give you another tip then for IG Live. So what I do for that um, comment that you put that you want to pin to the very top, I usually type it on my notes and then I select the entire comment and copy it. So now I have it copied, I go live, and as soon as I go live, I say, how are you doing? Welcome, today we're talking about boom, 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 boom. And I go through the points and then when I finish saying that, then I go and I, I paste my comment and I pin it to the top. Fantastic. That's, that's <laughs> why I haven't even touched my screen. Right now. Yeah. And, and, um, and Anya says it's Dory. It, it wasn't Nemo. It was Dory. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dory then. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So we have, you know, a two-minute video. Yeah. It's highly performing on LinkedIn. Um, Something else, you know, besides the captions, besides uh, anything that can help the visitor to your profile to get to to meet you, to get to uh, find enticing the video. Do you use something else? Do you use any other editing besides, you know, probably bars, the progress bars, etc. What what is you know for you uh, something that people have actually told you? this is great yeah so having a hashtag strategy believe it or not and it does seem you know like over talked about but a lot of people don't actually have one a lot of people don't even know how to get one so the rule of thumb that i give my audience and my students is if you're looking for hashtags specifically and this obviously is for instagram but Never ever use hashtags that are above one billion or one million, sorry, because you're not going to rank. Your videos are not going to show if you're started, uh, starting your channel. You want to come up at the very top. So look for those hashtags that don't have a lot of posts. And usually what I do is like 80% of the hashtags that are 800 posts or below, then 10% they are below 500 and 10 percent there are between 500 and 800 so that way you're looking for anything that is below 800 that's your 80 percent anything that is below 500 your 10 percent and then kind of like a sweet spot in between do that other 10 percent and just wow. make sure that you're looking at those numbers and see which hashtags are performing well and which ones are not because here's the thing right 
you can create the best two minute video in the world. But if you're posting it to, for example, Instagram at the wrong time, because you're not paying attention when your audience is actually online, the wrong date, because the dates and the times that your audience is posting is important and you're not using the right hashtags. You're simply investing your time and effort on creating an amazing piece of content that is just gonna be there and it's gonna get a few likes. And you're not even going for the likes, you're going for building that audience and building engagement. So if you're not seeing that, pay attention to your numbers, pay attention to your analytics and see how you can improve um, the things. And actually, um, Amanda from The Wolfie, she's amazing and giving a whole lot of wow. tips. So follow her, uh, is The Wolfie, The Wolfie Co, right? Um, yeah, The Wolf, The Wolf uh, dot Co. That co, the wall of that co. She's yes. got amazing yes. tips when it comes to Instagram. I've learned a ton from her. Um, so yeah, yes. I would recommend you follow her. Yes, I am a member of the Wolf Academy. I am in, an instructor of the Wolf Academy, and I, okay. you know, I, if I have to pay every single time, I would pay because every strategy tips that she's provided during workshops and and webinars have worked for me. Yeah. You know, to the charm. So. Uh, it's a well-invested uh, money. And, and as well with, you know, you as a podcast <laughs> expert, as a marketing expert. And one more thing before we go, because we went, obviously, again, over the time. <laughs> yeah. But, I, but it's because it's, it's so much, there's so much information out there. Um, your program, where can we find you? Yes, you can find me on Instagram at Sandy Viteri. And right now, Video Podcast Academy, unfortunately, is not open because we're in session. We launched in, in June. So right now, we're actually going through module five out of seven with my students. And I'm so looking forward to having them launch their video podcast. And then we're launching again, which means we will be having open enrollment on September 29th for my audience in English and September 30th for my audience in Spanish. So we do now have officially both English and Spanish wow. courses. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Gracias. <laughs> Venezolanas, al fin. Sí. And so people can find you at Sandy Viteri, of course. You have uh, your website, and I believe it's viterivibes.com. Yes. And, um, and your academy, your, it's opening again in September. Yes. I'm joining your waiting list. <laughs> I can't wait to have you. Yes, I'm yes. so excited. Of yeah. course. So anyway, I'm so happy that we got to get together finally now for the second time and talk about podcasting, the myth. What is a myth that people tell you know all the time about pod video podcasting? Yeah, well, the number one is it takes too much time. And reality is, if you don't have time, if you don't make time for the things you want to do, then you don't have time for anything. And that's what I say to my students and what I say to people yeah. is that you make time for the things that you care and you want. And if this is something that you're saying you don't have time, it's because you really don't, don't want it. So don't do it, right? You have to do it if you really feel like you have a calling that says, hey, I have a message that I need to share with the world. I have people that I can help. When you feel that that deep inside, you find time. You do it and, and you go for it. So that, that's the number one myth that people say. And, and also when you think about it from an effectiveness and efficiency point of view, if you're recording, if you already have a podcast, I want you to think about this. You're sitting down, you're creating the content in audio version. What does it yes. cost you to add video? Not much. You already created the content. You already have the guest speaker. You, so you add a camera. Yes, you have to go through the editing and the publishing, which you can very easily outsource as well. But take advantage of that time and effort that you're putting into creating the content to actually repurpose it and put it across multiple platforms. So that's my recommendation. And there's one more thing that you've done. And, and I remember uh, that you dedicate one day a month to yes, record videos rather than going week by week by week. 
That is correct. So one of the things, and I've been doing this now for years, not only for the recording of the video podcast, but just in general content creation, is I getting into the habit of batching. So batching your content, basically what you do is you select one day, and let's pretend that this is to do your video podcast. Then that one day is the day that you get your hair done, that you do your makeup. makeup. You do all, that. all the rest of the days you can be like I am right now on my sweatpants. And so you take the scrunchie, you right. take the scrunchie away. Exactly. And then that day you can inter I mean, you can, if you're doing it interview styles, I, I have done up to five interviews in one day, back to back. Wow. And then wow. you have content for over two months. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. So unbelievable. I, I don't know where can I start to thank you for giving us, you know, from the beginning to end this much information, this much value. And I know that Anya and all your students, Salma, have, um, they praise about you. They, oh. you know, they've sent me comments. They've sent me messages. And it, that it speaks volumes. It means oh. that it works, that you just do and give them actionable points. So if you're watching the replay, feel free to follow Sandy at Sandy Viteri. You can visit her website, sandvitervibes.com, her entrepreneurial vibrations show. And um, if you need a marketing expert, she is you know, she has, she's the whole package. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm going to hire you for her selling voice. You see, you're the expert in social selling. That's why I need to take that social selling class. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. guys. So Salma, everybody, and if you're watching the replay, yeah. let us know what was the action? What was the, the topic, the, the little tip? that Sandy gave you today that helped you the most. Send us the comments and just say hi in the yes. DMs. We are, you know, one message away. Thank you so much, Sandy. And yeah. I hope to see you again. I know that I'm going to yeah. see you again live soon. We're going to yeah. talk about something different regarding the video. Maybe, you know, tools, uh, resources, equipment, but uh, that would we're be both so passionate. Time. We're both so passionate about our topics that we can talk for days about. Oh this. yes, yeah. yes. So anyway, see you next time and mwah. Mwah. big hugs. I know that uh, up there, stay safe. Florida is really hot right now on with the COVID. So yeah. blessings. Yes. Thank you everyone for joining. See you soon. Thank you, my love. Mwah. Bye. See bye. you soon. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.